Ever had the feeling that your phone bill is getting out of hand? Not something we need to think about today, but in the 1970s, people did, and this device could put you back in control of your telephone expenditure. Before your very eyes, it showed you the cost of your call, automatically adjusting for the time of day and day of the week. Its sophisticated microcomputer calculated and displayed the escalating cost of your call as it happened. Until you made a new call, this thing remembered the cost of the last one. You could recall it at the touch of a key. Let's look at the Monitel. In 1978, this new microprocessor-based product could, for the first time, enable telephone users to control the cost of each call as it was being made. A safe first time for the consumer. Electronics Today magazine published a project that did a similar job back in November 1976, which I suspect formed the idea for the Monitel. This did a similar job in that it calculated the number of local charge calls against call distance and duration. The Monitel telephone charge clock computed and displayed the actual cost of the call in pounds and pence, automatically accounting for the day of the week, the time of day, charge band tariffs and the VAT rate. Now we're used to calls at a pretty standard rate here in the UK. If you know your rate and how long you're on the phone, it's easy to work out. At the time the Monitel was released, you'd have to know the time of day, the distance of the call and how long you were on the phone for in order to crunch the numbers and work out the cost. This took away the hassle. Two models catered for worldwide needs, a UK type and an international version. Designed to complement post office telephones, the unit was designed to fit under a BT700 series telephone. It was available in all seven standard BT colours, ivory, grey, green, black, red, blue and yellow. Sadly, my sun damaged telephone is in need of retro brighting, so the colour doesn't quite match this untarnished monitel. Amazingly, it was sold in places like Harrods and Selfridges, along with specialist telephone shops. The primary sale method seemed to be mail order however. It didn't infringe on the post office act. You may have seen these green circles and red triangles which dictated whether a piece of equipment could be plugged into the telephone network. Video link in the description below. Because it didn't directly connect to the telephone line and ran off mains power and was activated by the user, it was fine to use. When not being used to monitor calls, the Monitel reverted to a 12 hour clock, which could be set by keys hidden from view on the top surface of the unit where the telephone was placed. So how did it work? Well, the unit's based on the Rockwell PPS4-1 microprocessor range and was programmed by the insertion of a punch card. When the telephone rates changed, a new card was automatically supplied for a nominal fee. The microcomputer actually combined four sets of information needed to calculate the cost of the call. Firstly, the time of day and day of the week. This information was already available automatically from the Monitel's internal clock. If this wasn't set properly, you wouldn't get accurate readings. Secondly, the telephone tariff was provided to the machine by the punched card, supplied with the unit and inserted when you first set up the Monitel. The unit was then programmed to take account of the current tariff and VAT rate. Whenever rates changed, replacement cards were available. Thirdly, the charge code of the exchange you call. This was available from your post office dialing codes book and had to be easily memorised for frequently used numbers. You simply touched the appropriate key for the charge band you wanted before you dialed and the Monitel displayed the charge band you selected. The fourth piece of information was the duration of the call. You simply touched the start stop key when your call was connected and again when the call was finished. These are the different charge bands. L meant local, A up to 56 kilometers, and B over 56 kilometers, which were given in the telephone dialing code booklet. The international model incorporated six alternatives, the three UK charge bands plus international bands, one, two, and four, which covered all of Europe, North America, and the Caribbean. If you set the clock correctly, it adjusted automatically to peak, standard, and cheap rate periods. The Monitel plugged into the mains and didn't need an on off switch. You had to insert the card slowly and steadily into the device and what a pain this is. It took me literally hundreds of attempts to get this thing to work for filming. I opened it up and inside is quite simple. These brush contacts touch the pads on the board and when the card passes through, the combination of contacts programs the microprocessor with the information it needs to compute everything. The button contacts fit between these metal contacts and bridging them with your finger closes the circuit enabling them to function. 
If your card was lost or damaged, you had to send off to Monitel for a replacement. If you had the guarantee service for a small additional fee, replacement cards were free. With the card inserted as far as it would go, four random digits displayed on the screen. If you did it wrong, the display showed five eights. The next thing to do was set the time and date using these buttons. There's actually only three here and not six. To get the buttons to function as they're touch sensitive, you have to bridge both with your finger. With the card in the device and the clock set, the start stop function along with the charge band was all you needed to select when you made a call in order to calculate the cost. Monitel was based out of 28 Berrychurch Road, Colchester, a house long since sold and sold again. The price of the UK model was £29 and the international version £39, both inclusive of VAT in 1978. £29 back then was the equivalent of around £160 today. There appears to be a later version which just plugged into the phone socket and calculated the cost of the call as soon as it was connected. This version simply eliminated the requirement to press the start and stop button at the start and end of the call. The price kept dropping, perhaps due to slow uptake. By 1979 it was just £15. Towards the end of that year it was just a tenner. That's still the equivalent of £55 today. The sudden price drop is probably because it was crap. It may be old, but my device is new old stock, and despite a thorough clean and service, it just doesn't like reading the card, and I suspect this has probably always been the case. After about a year on the market, the Monitel faded into obscurity, with just the odd ad into the early 1980s before it disappeared completely. What became of Monitel as a company isn't quite clear.